Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In the last few videos I showed you the benefits of training models using techniques like LoRa and QLoRa, reducing the GPU RAM memory requirements and making it possible to fine-tune those models on rather small GPUs. Well, in this video we're going to dive a little deeper and I will show you how you can actually adapt your existing code for uh, LoRa and QLoRa. So I'll start from a previous example uh, where I showed you how to fine-tune a summarization model and we'll just add a few lines of code to enable LoRa and, uh, and we'll see how that goes, right? Let's get to work. A while ago uh, we ran this example where I showed you how to fine-tune uh, Flan T5 large for summarization on a corpus of uh, legal documents, right? And I used obviously the Flan T5 model from the hub and I used the Buildsum dataset from, uh, from the Hogging Face hub, which contains um, US law, California law, etc. Um, and, and this was reasonably easy. We're not going to go through the, the full code again. Um, I just want to show you quickly the, the fine-tuning script. Obviously, I'll, I'll put the link to that previous video in, in the description. So, uh, well, we had a metrics function. Uh, we just loaded the model from the hub as well as the tokenizer, prepared our training arguments, our trainer, and called train. Okay, so pretty simple uh, vanilla hugging face code. And, uh, and we trained this, uh, I actually trained it on a P4D instance, which is the uh, a really large AWS instance, which comes with multiple A100 uh, GPUs, because I guess I could get one. Um, and that took about, yeah, a little less than uh, half an hour, right? Okay, so th that's the starting point. So now let's say we want to take that same training code and we want to apply um, LoRa and, and QLoRa to it in order to be able to train on smaller GPUs. So how do we do this? So here's the, the updated code, right? So let's take a look. Um, so obviously you will need, let me maybe zoom in a bit. Uh, you'll need the PEFT library from Hugging Face, okay? And remember, PEFT means Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning. Uh, we need to import uh, a few objects from that, okay? Uh, we have a cool function to uh, print the actual number of tradable parameters, but I'll get back to that, okay? So start from PEFT, okay? Metrics function isn't changed, receiving the uh, hyperparameters in SageMaker is unchanged. Loading the data from S3 is unchanged. Okay. And in fact, we just need to add a few lines um, before we load the model. You can see we're loading the model here. So first of all, um, we need to define our quantization configuration. Okay, and quantization is implemented and uh, th through the bits and bytes library, which is integrated in the transformers library. Uh, and and here I kept it super simple. Uh, I'm just quantizing the model to eight bit. Okay, uh, but feel free to read more about the quantization options here. You can do four bit. You can do double quantization. Uh, Etc. You can take things pretty far. Um, and, but for now, let's just stay uh, simple, start simple, uh, and hopefully, you know, maintain uh, decent accuracy by 8-bit uh, quantization. Okay, so define that object, um, enable 8-bit, and just pass that quantization configuration to the from pre-train API where we load the model. Okay, so that's that's all you need to do to load and quantize the model. Okay, um, then we need to prepare the the model for k-bit training, meaning you know either four-bit or eight-bit. So prepare the model for I would say quantized training. Okay, so just call that thing. 
And next, uh, and last actually, we need to enable um, the LoRa config, okay? So uh, first and foremost, of course, the task type. Here we're doing sequence to sequence, okay? Uh, you can look at the doc to see what, what other task types are, are supported, okay? Uh, we don't care about inference. We're just doing training here. So let's uh, set inference mode to false. And we set that all important R parameter to 16. So if you watched my previous videos on LoRa, um, you may remember that R is actually the rank of the two update matrices that we're training, right? And if you don't understand what I just said, <laughs> please go watch uh, the two previous videos where I'm fine tuning Stable Diffusion and Llama 2 using LoRa, right? But, you know, to keep things short, R is basically uh, the dimension of the, of the update matrices. Um, that will be training instead of training the full model. So the lower you go, um, the, the, the smaller those matrices will be, and so the, the fewer trainable parameters you will have. But obviously, um, the lower you go, the more chances you have of degrading accuracy, right? Because uh, you still need to train a few parameters to, to fine-tune the model. So you need to experiment. I think uh, you know eight or or sixteen are a good place to a good place to start. Um, and if you get the accuracy that you want from from that value, then fine. If the model uh, is is small enough to fit in GPU memory, then fine. Um, uh, you know m my intuition would be try to find the largest R value that still makes it possible to fine tune on whatever, you know, small or mid-sized GPU you have, right? There's no need to go super low. Um, you will you will risk um, hurting accuracy here, okay? Again, if you want the more theoretical details, please watch the, the previous videos, okay? All right, so once we have that config, um, we can just apply the config to our um, original model. And we can print the number of trainable parameters, okay? And this is where that cool function comes into play. Uh, I borrowed this from another notebook, so thank you to whoever wrote this. Um, this will print the total number of parameters from the model and the, the actual number of trainable parameters that we'll learn during the LoRa process and, and obviously the, the ratio, okay? So we'll see in the log. How, uh, how far we actually uh, shrunk the fine-tuning job. And I think the rest is strictly identical. I don't remember tweaking anything here. Yeah, training arguments, trainer, training and saving. Okay, so updating your code uh, for LoRa or QLoRa and, and whether you use SageMaker or not is, is irrelevant. Uh, you'll need to import the library okay you'll need to define your quantization configuration if you want to apply quantization uh, make sure you set it here prepare the model for quantized training and then define your LoRa config uh, thinking a little bit about that R parameter applying the config to the model and you're good to go so as you can see this is extremely easy, right? I mean, LoRa and QLoRa are complicated things, but applying those techniques, experimenting with those techniques in your own code is really, really simple. So how does that work then? Uh, well, in fact, there is a zero update to the SageMaker notebook I'm running here because all the updates are... Uh, contained in that training script that you saw. So I, I changed absolutely nothing here. Uh, I believe the only thing that I changed is the instance I'm training in, right? And you know I like to work with the smallest possible GPUs just to prove my point. Uh, again, these are probably a little too small uh, for, for practical use, although you will see training time is not as stupid as you would think. Um, and the reason also why I want to use this is because they are dirt cheap, okay? And we'll talk about cost again. Um, 
in this particular example, I did not enable spot instances because I think I didn't have enough uh, quota for the for spot instances on G5, uh, oddly enough. But okay, this is how you would do it. Um, set uh, spot instances to true. The max runtime needs to be set to something. So why not 24 hours? And that's it, right? Um, and that's all there is. And then I ran, uh, I ran this. Um, oh yeah, maybe the requirements. Yes. Uh, the requirements are important because, of course, we need to install PEFT, okay? Uh, and we need to upgrade the transformers library in our uh, deep learning containers, okay? And and yes, I think I had this dependency on using a, a more recent Accelerate version, okay? So make sure you inject those requirements in your training job. Again, all the code will be available, so no need to take notes, okay? So I run this, um, and it ran for, uh, I would say, about five hours, right? And you could say, oh, that's way too slow. <clears throat> um, but again, it's not that slow, if you ask me, right? Because you could really, uh, you could run this thing overnight. You could run this thing in parallel. Uh, you could try a hundred different combinations of data sets and parameters and you know R values and whatnot, just because you can absolutely get a hundred G5 instances uh, and you can probably not get hundred P4s, uh, let alone let alone P5s, right? So it's it's a trade-off between the availability of those GPUs and the cost and the fact that if you want to scale out uh, your your fine-tuning jobs it's much easier to scale out from a tech and a cost perspective using the tiniest gpus you can find right if you're doing interactive work if you're exploring then yeah five hours is obviously too long but if you want to run this at scale uh, at a very reasonable cost as you will see this is a really good option okay um so actually i think i have the training log here in CloudWatch. And let's see how that goes. So we're installing our dependencies. And there's a ton of stuff here. Okay, uh, and I'm looking for that uh, parameter ratio. Here it is, okay. So we can see originally the model has something like 787 million parameters. And in fact, we're only going to be training 4 million, 4.7 million. Okay. So we're only training 0.6% of the model. Okay. So 0.6% of the original model. So if you increase R, that percentage will, will increase. If you decrease R, that percentage will decrease, okay? Because again, that influences the size of the update matrices in the lower algo, okay? But that's that's a huge win. And, and you know, that's how you end up being able to load those rather large models on, um, on tiny instances, right? In fact, I run some experiments with the larger um, Flanty 5s, the uh, XL and XXL, and they do fit in, um, they do fit on, on uh, that G5 XL instance amazingly, um, uh, which, uh, you know, which I didn't expect. Um, so feel free to try. Uh, you know, I didn't go all the way and, and experiment with all the model sizes, but you can definitely fit the larger, um, the larger T5 models which have, which are multi-billion models. I think I have the sizes here, yeah. XL is 3 billion, XXL is 11 billion, okay? So these will fit on, um, on that G5 X large instance, uh, which, which is an A10G GPU, right? So definitely not something huge. Um, okay, so feel free to experiment. So this ran for, uh, yeah, something like, uh, like five hours and, um, and then, Obviously, once I'm done, let's scroll down to the last few cells. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's not read the log. It's not interesting. Okay, so I've got my artifact in S3. Um, I copied it uh, and I 
pushed it back to the hub and you can see it here right so 8-bit quantization blah 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 and we can see the files and we can see the adapter model is just 19 megabytes right so it's super tiny um, and so how do we use this now so this took about five hours okay and once the job is complete we get our uh, model artifact in s3 and i copied it extracted it and pushed it to the hub right so we can we can download it again you can see the adapter model so the the LoRa updates are just 19 megabytes all right so that's a tiny fraction of the original model of course and now we can use it okay so um what am i doing next so i'm importing paths and transformers and data sets okay i'm defining the model id of the original model so the base model my own uh, fine-tuned model okay so the adapter weights and i'm creating a peft config from my uh, LoRa model okay i'm downloading the base model and i'm merging the two right so i'm literally adding the adapter weights to the weights of the original model okay and then i'm setting my model in evaluation mode because i don't want to train it okay so now what i have is is literally a model that has the same size as the original model except i added my uh, my update weights to it okay and it will predict at the same speed um, because the merge has been done once and there's no extra latency all right so now i can load my data set from the hub again that builds some data set take a, a rather random example here print the text for that um, that document okay this act may be cited as the venezuelan refugee assistant act blah 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 okay very hard to read and let's try and summarize this so um so how do i do this um well i'm using the tokenizer from uh, the original model tokenizing the text above okay truncating it if needed returning the input ids and then i am generating the summary passing the input ids I want to use, uh, I want to get up to 64 tokens. I'm setting up uh, sampling to help the model uh, be more creative. And again, I'll let it use some of the, uh, I would say, more infrequent vocabulary, right? Uh, low top P values uh, make the model very safe, very, very conservative. Uh, high values make it a little more creative. Okay. Uh, and that's what we want because I guess we want descriptive summaries. And then I'm getting my output tokens and I am just decoding those, right? And printing out the results. And the summary says to amend the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1986 to provide for the adjustment of the status of certain Venezuelan nationals, which looks like a pretty good summary. And I was actually meaning to check, is that a sentence? here is that actually yeah and no, i say it is it is a proper it is a proper summary okay it didn't extract just one sentence from the from the text okay so uh to you know it, it, it in all transparency i mean i didn't try to optimize the the model here so if you try other examples <laughs> it'll probably be horrible um, I, I really focused on, um, um, I would say, the, the machine learning engineering part, which is, hey, let's use LoRa to train those large models on small GPUs. Um, but I didn't really try and optimize the, the machine learning metrics here, right? Which, of course, you would want to do uh, experimenting with some of those hyperparameters like, um, like R and, and uh, and, and maybe those at generation time, etc. Okay, um, so I guess I'm just uh, this is just a lucky example here. 
let's take a look at price now. Let's take a look at cost. Um, so this is the cost for SageMaker training instances. So let's see if we can find P4D. So P4D 24XL 37 something. Okay. And I train for, let's say, I think 1500 seconds. Okay. So let's say 15 bucks. All right. Um, and now we need to look at maybe G5. Can we find G5? G5 is 1.4. Okay, so yeah, let's be precise here. And okay, let's say six hours because I think it was a little more. Um, yeah, it was between five and six hours. Okay, so let's say eight dollars. So, you know, ballpark, uh, we're already twice as. Um, twice as cheap um, which again is important because if you want to train uh, lots of different models lots of different combinations you know 2x cost improvement is great plus um, I believe it'll be more e much much easier to um, to get spot prices on well spot availability first of all and spot discounts on g5 uh, versus uh, versus P4, right? Grabbing P4s is challenging, so I think spot P4 is a little too much to ask for. Um, G5 spot shouldn't be a problem. So let's say we can, let's say we can take, you know, maybe even 50% off, right? Okay, so we're if we can easily move, shrink this to four bucks um, instead of let's say fifteen, sixteen. So that would be four x cheaper. Okay, and you could probably go even lower than that. So um, so yeah, I mean, cost is never really discussed. Uh, we always focus on you know GPUs and models. But I think when I meet with enterprise customers, cost is is one of the top concerns. So um, especially when they run tons of different models and they have large teams, et cetera, et cetera. So if there's a way to do this 4X cheaper at the end of the month, you know, it means thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars um, in savings, right? And that's obviously very, very important. Okay, well, I think that's what I wanted to tell you. So uh, again, I'll put all the resources in the video description. Laura and QLaura are amazing. Uh, give them a try, grab the notebook, start tweaking, and uh, I'll see you soon with more videos, right? Until then, keep rocking.